Why does this matter? Uh -huh. We go back to the pteropod. And by the way, I didn't have this link, and I should have, when I showed you the, the and this is your goodie bag, et cetera, right? There's some really nice uh, articles here that you can find related to these experiments and other things about ocean acidity, and, uh, in case you're interested. Um, but see, what, we, what I did is, was that this was my Why This Matters on Monday, and I, I wanted to tell you about the goodie bag and about the, how things dissolve, because Monday was about dissolving, right? And finding a saturation point. Now we can, we can get to the next place, which is why does that matter for the pteropod shell? What is the chemistry that, that matters there? OK, so I made the ocean a little more acidic. Why does that matter? But you see, now we're armed with the knowledge we need to answer that question. Now we're armed with it. All we need to do, as always with everything in life, is look at the chemistry. That's it. Say that at the Thanksgiving table. You'll be very popular. We said CO2 plus H2O. This goes, oh, find some equilibrium, to H2CO3. Now, this is called carbonic acid. This is called carbonic acid. There's the pteropod up there. And there's a reaction that's, that's really relevant that you'll see from the ones we're about to write down why. Because the thing is that, why, why, what happens to carbonic acid? That, well, well, carbonic acid also goes through a dissolution reaction. So carbonic acid, so this is CO2 dissolving in water. Now we made carbon, so carbonic acid uh, goes like this, okay? It goes into HCO3 minus plus H plus. Now, here's the thing. OK, what is the shell made of? Well, the shell that's dissolving in, in its you know, kind of like the core material is calcium carbonate. So that's CaCO3. That's the shell. And the shell also has an equilibrium reaction that happens. The shell of, of, a, of a sea a creature is in dynamic equilibrium with the ocean. And, and so it's going like this. It's going to, uh, well, OK, Ca2 plus and CO3 2 minus. And, and, and OK, but the thing is, it has an equilibrium constant. All these have equilibrium constants. So like, for example, for this one, the KSP, the solubility product constant, because this is a solid. This is a solid shell, solid going to ions in aqueous solution. Well, so the KSP for that is somewhere around 5 times 10 to the minus 9th. 5 times 10 to the minus 9th. Yeah, but here's the thing. We just went through this. If I consume one of these or change the concentration of one of these and not the other, we just did this. If I, if I change the concentration, if I consume any of these, then I might drive the reaction, or consume or produce. If I change any of these independently, I'm going to drive the reaction, because that's how we keep to our K. That's what Le Chatelier's principle tells us. And so what ends up happening is you've got the extra H plus ions. So these are ions in solution. Where did they come from? They came from the CO2 giving us carbonic acid, which then gave us H+. Those are what I'm talking about. Well, they react with the CO3 minus. It's CO3 2 minus. This lowers the CO3 2 minus concentration near the shell, right? Gesundheit. And if I lower this, because I've taken some of this now and I've reacted it, so now I've got less of it. And because of what we just saw, if I've got less of this, you're going to drive this way, which is going to dissolve more of the shell. Right? That's why this works. Or, well, that's why this, this happens. Works sounds like a positive thing. Right? So this lowers the concentration of CO3 2 minus, and that drives more dissolution. 
That is what's happening. And we now can understand it in terms of the concepts that we've just learned. You know, historically, I mentioned 50 million years. Actually, by some accounts, it's 300 million. It depends on which studies you read. But, but for at least 50 and maybe as much as 300 million years, the ocean uh, uh, has had a pH of 8.18. Now, where's the, oh, yeah. right. So let's just say, you know, last, oh, 50 to 300 million-ish years, the ocean pH was 8.18. And today, it's uh, 8.07. And the prediction is that in 2100, it will be 7.8. Now, as we will see in a little bit, and you said, what's pH? Well, I, many of you probably already know, but we, I will tell you what it is in a little bit. But because this is a logarithmic thing, this is a lot. Right? Today, the ocean is 25% more acidic than it's been in 300 million-ish years. Uh, and in 2100, it will be 126% more acidic. That's why they used 7.8 in, in the experiments of the pteropods. 